How important is a second chance? Aaron Moriarty has proof that sometimes it can make all the difference in the world. Everything I know of home is captured in an image of a boy running from the police, his arms flailing unlike anything you'd expect to fly. Reginald Dwayne Betts is a poet, playwright, and performer. He's also an attorney. I was before I pulled the pistol, I kissed my mother goodnight. I told her I loved her. But when has love ever been enough? So if the word overachiever comes to mind, Beth says it's the result of another word that also describes him, felon. I haven't known you that long, but I can't even imagine that the person I know would have found himself at a shopping mall carjacking somebody. Yeah, I know it was almost like a kind of black swan event in my life. You know, nothing would have prepared me for it and nothing would have prepared me for what happened after. When Dwayne Betts was 16, an honor student in Maryland, he and a group of teens carjacked a vehicle. 25 years later, he still can't quite explain it. They weren't friends. The guy who gave me the gun, don't know his name now, didn't know his name then. So it was just one of these things where if it wasn't true, I wouldn't believe that it was true. Although he had no criminal history and the victims were not physically harmed, Dwayne Betts was tried as an adult and spent almost the next nine years in prison. You know, I think that was the worst part of all of it, really. You know, being 16 and having to tell your mom that you're locked up and then also having to tell her that you did it. And this is probably why I immediately started figuring out what I'm going to be in the world. You know, I planned on being an engineer. But I, I said to myself, I said, uh, nine years in prison, the only thing I'm guaranteed to have is, is paper and, and, and an ink pen. I'm going to be a writer. After a fight landed him in solitary, other inmates slipped him books. They had created a kind of underground library. Hey, yo, send me a book. He describes the moment and the sound in a one-man show he wrote. And it came. A kind of magic. The Black Poets by Dudley Randall. It is how he discovered poetry. I'm in a hole. Summertime in Virginia, it's hot. I'm, I'm meeting and discovering Lucille Clifton, Sonia Sanchez, Robert Hayden, Mary Baraka. Am I right that poetry gave you a way to tell stories? And it gave me a, you know, structure. It gave me a vision, and it gave me a way to hold something in my head that I could like articulate in a short span of time. Betts was released when he was 24. His first book, published in 2009, was a memoir about life in prison. Three books of poetry followed, one entitled Felon, the simple word that dogs prison inmates long after their release. If you do time in prison, one of the things that you become accustomed to is people telling you what you aren't and what you can't do. You can't rent an apartment in this place because you have a felony conviction. You can't work at my job because you have a felony conviction. You can't attend my school because you have a felony conviction. But Betts was able to attend Prince George's Community College. He got a job running a bookstore, which is where he met a classmate, Therese Robertson. He said on the second date he had to tell you something that was very difficult to tell you. That's when he told me that he was just released out of prison a couple of months ago. It kind of took me ba aback a little bit, but um, it didn't make me look at him any differently. You didn't have second thoughts about a second date? No, actually I did. <laughs> he comes across so um, kind and gentle and kind of comes off as a nerd, but I feel bad saying that. <laughs> we were like uh, safety blankets for each other in a way. They married and supported each other through school. Dwayne got a master's degree and went on to law school at Yale. At some point, I decided that I'm not getting away from prison. It's a kind of gravity on my life, but it also could be the lens through which I think about the world. So my life became better in some ways when I embraced the fact that this is not a thing that I could run from it. The past has given Dwayne Betts something valuable, even enviable, a mission first five prisons I was at, we didn't have a library at all. He started a nonprofit called Freedom Reads that designs, builds, and places mobile libraries in prison housing units. 
That's about why we make the decisions we make. So the, oh, really? the biases that we have. So you read most of these books that you donated in here? I read a bunch of them. What does it mean if you put this library in the housing unit so that every time they look out of that cell, they're not just seeing the desperation and frustration and another bit of monotony? We finished this piece for you. This looks so beautiful. <laughs> is that the walnut? That is walnut. Yes. It's black walnut, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Betts has thought out every aspect of the libraries. Not just the books, but also the reclaimed wood that will hold them. Oh! <laughs> this is fantastic. You're seeing your friend go to there and grab books. Now you're like, what? What was you reading? Now you got a different conversation because the conversation is not just what was on TV or who won a space game. But now we just added another one. And, and the other conversation is definitely going to have light in it. Keith, Juvie, Fetz. Dwayne Betts lives his life as an argument for second chances. Can't get right. Who nicknames their child can't get right? At a recent rehearsal for his show that he now performs in prisons, he is surrounded by paper kites made from clothing once worn by prison inmates. Out of everything, I think this is probably like the most personal work. This is like sweat in this, you know, it's like blood in this. It's like, like years, it's like a decade of living. Some of the clothing came from inmates Betts had served time with and then later helped get parole. How is it really possible for me to imagine forgetting the people that I spent puberty with, that I spent my early 20s with, people who wrote me letters when I was going through college, people who would get my book in the prison library and be like, Shai, we got your book. It's Dwayne's drive, despite his past, this piece, take it. that Therese Betts hopes will be an example for their sons, 14-year-old Makai and 10-year-old Miles. I think that's one of the things that I love about him, just because he can show our children the tenacity and to always have that drive and persevere. And life is hard for all of us for a lot of different reasons. And you can still be the person you want to be despite all of those obstacles. This past fall, Betts got a mysterious phone call informing him that he had won a MacArthur Fellowship that comes with a $625,000 grant and a new word to describe him, genius. It didn't really go to his head because like, it wasn't like he just realized, oh, I'm a genius now, because like, he already knew that. In fact, Reginald Dwayne Betts says the fellowship says far more about the people who surround him. I love the MacArthur piece, but more than it affirming my healthy ego, I think it, it, it affirms the faith that a lot of folks had in me when they backed me when everybody else was saying no. Therese has to know that it mattered when we met like 20 years ago. You know, I've done all of this, not to make you love me, but to be like, I was worthy of the love you gave me.